Good morning to everyone. It's really neat that we're back together again. And I don't know about you, but I'm actually quite enjoying uh, doing church through eChurch. And uh, I hope that you're being blessed as we sort of have a ch- this opportunity to gather and meet and, and uh, just remember God again this day. I hope you enjoyed last weekend, long weekend, and got out a little bit and hope you enjoyed the sunshine and and just had a bit of space. First, a little bit of freedom, I think, that some of us have had for a while. I guess the good news is uh, the church didn't burn down last weekend, and uh, I learned something about uh, citronella oil, that it actually burns a lot more fiercely than, than olive oil, and I guess that's part of the learning curve, isn't it? Well, we've seen a bit of a, a flattening again, uh, the uh, stabilising of the uh, COVID-19 virus, and really looks like we won't be too long before we're gathering again, or maybe uh, a few weeks or months maybe, uh, before restrictions start to ease up. And I don't know about you, I'm really looking forward to that time. I'm really looking forward to meeting again and and, uh, having coffee and sharing and just worshipping together. There's nothing quite like worshipping together as a family, is it? As we begin our time this morning, I just want to begin with a time of prayer. Sometimes I use the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S, because it reminds me that, you know, there's many things that we can bring in our times of prayer to God. The A stands for adoration or worship. You know, often it's good to tell God just how great he is, that we we love him, that we worship him, that he's kind and good and, and that he's faithful and we appreciate him so much. We can also include confession. It's so good to say sorry for the things that we've done. You know, pretty much every week I know that there's things that I've said and thought and done that have displeased God. We just bring that as confession and just say sorry for the things we've done. Then there's thanksgiving. The T is for thanksgiving. You know, even in, even in a time of panic or pandemic, we've got so much to be grateful for. You know, we, we, we can just thank God for all the blessings as a community, as a church, as a, as a family and as individuals. And the S stands for supplication. It's when we ask God for things. You know, even though God knows our every need, he, he wants us to ask. He wants us to ask for good things. You know, sometimes we don't have because we don't ask. Question today, is this some good thing that you don't have because you haven't asked God for? Why not ask God for something good today? Anyway, let's join together and, and pray. Lord, today we, we acknowledge your goodness to us. You know, especially through this time when so many around the world are suffering, Lord, you have been so good to us. Many are grieving having lost loved ones. Many are in fear of what might happen in the future. But Lord, you're always good and kind and gracious to your people. And for that, we worship you this morning. Lord, we also confess that we've done wrong things and and we're sorry for every unkind, selfish, proud, nasty word, thought or deed. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us, for removing our wrongdoing. We thank you for life. We thank you for your faithfulness in providing every need. We thank you, Lord, for protection over this church. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit move in our community, that he will draw many to you at this time. So, Lord, we just invite you to be amongst your people wherever we are meeting today. And that you'll bless our time together as we worship and honour you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I also want to acknowledge the the many mums who don't have children, but are spiritual mums who care for, who influence, who are are, are spiritual mums to our children. Thank you. God sees and knows what you do. Let's make sure that today we acknowledge our mums for all that they have done for us and particularly bless them. Thank you, mums. We've got some words for our mums this morning. Hey, guys. Hello. Happy Mother's Day. 
All right, three questions for you. First question. What is your mother's favorite food? Sushi. Spaghetti. All right, second question. Is your mother a better driver than your father? Yes. <laughs> and third question. How do you know your mother loves you? By gr Ugh, sorry. By buying us um, groceries and making us food. Because uh, she tells us and she takes care of us. Good morning, Jameson. How are you? Everybody wants to know, what's what? mum's favourite food? Okay. Probably not. Maybe. It's good for me to ration. Very likely. Definitely dark chocolate. Without a doubt. Okay, so Jameson, everyone wants to know, who's the better driver? Dad, you're supposed to be focusing what? on the... Mum. Okay, Jameson, so tell me, why does Mum love you? Because I'm special. Jude, how do you feel when Mummy is around? I feel happy and be with Mummy and follow her all around. How do you feel when Mummy's not around? I um, be sad and cry. What do you like about Mummy? Mm, I like her. Play I like her playing with me, and and being better, and like playing airport. Okay, Zara. How do you know that your mummy loves you? Well, she says I love you, and she gives me lovely gifts. Okay. And why is Mother's Day special? Because you get time with your family and to show her that you love her and you're grateful that you have her. Good morning, church. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I have been thinking lately, how can I serve you and our church through music and worship? Well, the situation is rather limited. My band is me, myself, and I. But it doesn't really matter, does it? Because our God is great. He is unlimited. He is worthy to be praised. So let us pour our heart out to Him this morning. And let us join in praise and worship to lift His wonderful name high. Great the earth.
Good morning everyone. It's so great to be sharing with you today. Um, Gary asked me to preach this sermon um, at the beginning of the year, so I hope you're blessed. Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment that you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure that you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? I wonder if you can relate to this scenario. I was a young teenager. It's part of a poor family. We didn't have much, uh, but we were generally okay. We had lots of food. Um, we had clothes. They weren't mostly the fashionable kind, but they were, they were adequate. However, as a teenager, we do long to fit in, we long to belong. And one day, I went to a new school and I was wearing clothes that didn't fit in. Someone pointed it out to me. And inwardly, I see it. I saw how they judged me. I looked at them and even though I didn't speak the words inside me, I was saying, how fake you are. You were just looking on my out, outer place, out my outer clothes, and just determining somehow or other that I was a lesser being because I wasn't wearing the most fashionable kinds. Later on, when I read these words from Jesus, judge not lest you be judged, I made an inner vow. I decided I'm never going to judge anyone. I'm never going to put attention to them being different like that other girl did to me. But is this what Jesus was really asking in this sermon? I want you to think about this a bit further. We are in a very judging world at the moment. At this moment as I'm speaking, there are millions of people clicking on Facebook, liking this, disliking that, judging who is in, who is out, um, pointing to people's faults and failures, um, sometimes praising some and other times deriding them. We are an incredibly, incredibly judging world. Hmm. I want us to explore this idea that Jesus had in Matthew's Gospel. This is from the Sermon on the Mount. We've been having a series on this. Um, we've had Gary speaking on worry. Um, we've had um, a message also from Gary on the treasure in our heart. These are all from Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount. Now, I want this message not to be heavy. I want you to imagine that when Jesus spoke these words, he had a twinkle in his eye. He was wanting it not to be a condemnation or a you know, heavy sort of topic. I want you to see some of what he was trying to teach his disciples through these words. He wanted us to be people who would respond to the Holy Spirit with wisdom and to know when is the right time to judge. That we don't judge blindly or defensively or reactively, but we would judge with truth. Now, just for the childlike among you, and maybe there are some children watching, I want you to have a look at chapter 7 in Matthew's Gospel. How many animals does Jesus mention in this part of his Sermon on the Mount? At the end of the, the set message, I'm going to ask again and see if you manage to get the right number. Now, if we become like Jesus, are we never meant to judge anyone? I mean, I did an inner vow thinking that I was doing the right thing. And I thought that because God is the only righteous judge. God is the only one who judges with holiness and truth. And he sees our inner motives. He knows everything about us. So his judgments are right that if I judged, it would be with self-interest and bias. I would be flawed by my actions and moments. And surely, 
I am not the right person to judge. But Jesus is not saying this. He says, why do you see the speck in someone's eye but don't notice the log in your own? Jesus asked this question. It's a strong hyperbole. How can you not notice something as big as a log? In today's language, we would call this a blind spot. The log is a blind spot. Now, I need to get technical here. Each of us has a blind spot in our eyes. Each eye has a place in the retina where there are no cones and rods and the nerves exit through the disc. And this place is our physiological blind spot. Our eyes um, don't take vision in this part of the retina. And we have two eyes so that our blind spot in each eye compensates, is compensated for by the uh, retina of the other side. And in reality, with spiritual blind spots, we need a second vision too. You need to realise that it's possible that you can have a blind spot first. And then you need to be open to the possibility of asking someone if they see your blind spot. Is there someone who is a mentor or a trusted person who is walking alongside you, who can give you this information that there is a blind spot there. And if someone does tell you that you have a blind spot, will you react with anger, defensiveness or criticism or will you thank that person for giving you their pearls of wisdom? It's only when someone else points out the blind spot that then you become aware of it, that it was there all along, impacting your vision and how you interact with others. I need my trusted mentors and family members to reveal to me my blind spots. You see, regardless of my early intentions to never judge, we are all judging, whether unconsciously or consciously. As I speak, I have Zoom uh, audience who looked in on me to judge my words and my presentation. I have asked them to do this because I need the feedback to ensure that my preaching improves as I'm doing this as part of my study. I want my preaching to count and be meaningful and add impact to people's lives. The judgment of others helps me to improve. In our society, we appoint judges who are learned individuals, who are the people who decide how our laws should be um, carried out. They're also the people who call people to account when they have transgressed the law. So judging is part of God's kingdom, and a God's kingdom that actually works well has people who do judge and judge rightly. So Jesus is calling for us to have wisdom and humility as we judge, and that we judge rightly and not blindly, reactively or defensively. Let me explain further. Now Jesus continued as he was teaching this sermon We are called to make wise choices. Every time you make a choice, you have judged one choice over another. So in this his historical season of transition and change, we are each called to make wise choices and intentionally choose God's way. Jesus continues, Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Jesus was using a metaphor here. We need to be conscious of who we share our special precious moments about God with. There is a judgment to make here. Do we share everything with everyone? Will they appreciate it? Will they turn around and mock us and attack us? That's a place for you to judge. I remember another story. It was from my high school years. I was in grade nine and Gideons came to our school. I, I remembered because I was so happy they gave every student a New Testament. And I was really conscious at that time because um, I had sort of put my hand up to be a Christian at school and joined an ISCF group. And I hoped others would come and join us too. But on the bus, on the way home that day, when the Gideons came, 
uh, I was very dismayed. There was a row of students at the back who started tearing pages out of their Gideon's New Testament and folding them up into paper aeroplanes. And some they threw in the bus, but others they threw out the window. And for me, this was really disheartening because I saw those pages as being a way to show us the way of Jesus. And I could see that they were treating something sacred and trampling them underfoot. But later on, Holy Spirit and God gave me an insight into this, not to get too dismayed, that even those pages that were thrown out the window, God would use them, if necessary, to impact someone walking along the path who happened to pick up a page off the road. I had to trust that God could still accomplish his purposes, even with torn up pages from the Bible. Jesus continues in verse 12. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Again, we're called to judge the way that we are going. Not all roads will lead to heaven, only a narrow way. There are a lot of people in this world who have this viewpoint that it doesn't matter what road you're on, as long as you do it with integrity and purpose and remain true to yourself. Jesus is not endorsing this worldview. Jesus is saying that there is a narrow way, but it's a way of hardship and difficulty. It is the way of life. Jesus' way of life is revealed through sacrifice and love. It was not the easy way, but it was a way of taking up a cross that we are called to follow Jesus the same. The way that Jesus revealed was for everyone who chooses to receive the gift of forgiveness for our sins by acknowledging our own wrongdoing, accepting the sacrifice of Jesus as full payment for our sins. It wasn't so that we could do what we wanted on this earth, but that we would willingly submit to him and follow him. Are you judging your choices in life and making intentional ones to follow Jesus on the narrow way of life? In verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You'll recognise them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but every diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognise them by their fruit. Again, Jesus is asking us to judge. He's asking us to judge the fruit of those people who speak God's word into our lives. Now, someone comes to you who speaks God's word to you, and yet their life is chaotic, and they have fruit from their choices and disorder that they have embraced. Jesus gives you the wisdom to choose. Are these words from him? Jesus was clear that the fruit of these people will reveal their source. Jesus judged people, and at times he sounded harsh, but he always spoke with love for the person. He judged rightly because he knew their hearts and their motives. We do not have Jesus' eyes to see their hearts and motives, and that's why we need the discernment that comes from the Holy Spirit. We are called to judge prophetic words. We see in part and we prophesy in part. God often gives people part of the revelation and it's intended to be shared and other parts added together to make the whole. And this is what Paul explains later in 1 Corinthians 14, 29. He says, let two or three prophets speak and let others judge. Prophetic voices need to be part of a community of believers who interact with and become known so that their fruit can be seen and words can be joined with other voices to share their revelation and insights about God. Now, as Jesus was closing this sermon, he clarifies that not everyone who calls Jesus Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of our Father. Now, it almost seems like Jesus is saying a religion based on law here. But Jesus revealed that the outworking 
of our love impacts our behaviour and our character. It isn't that we get into God's kingdom with our behaviour, just doing the right things, but by our relationship with Jesus. If we know him, Jesus said to those he didn't know, I never knew you. This relationship with Jesus goes two ways. We know Jesus and he knows us. And it comes about because we spend time with Jesus. Are you becoming like Jesus because you're hanging out with him day by day? Or are you becoming more like the, the world because of the people you're hanging out with who are influencing you? Today I've shared about Jesus' teaching on judging rightly. While at first glance it seems to be that Jesus is forbidding judging, by looking deeper we can see that Jesus was calling for wisdom and humility to judge ourselves first, to take that log out of our own eye. This requires reflection and asking a true trusted friend or mentor to expose our flaws and our hidden blind spots. Jesus cares of us, about us developing character. Jesus is also causing us to be wise in how we share with others about our holy and sacred moments. He calls us to judge the fruit of the lives of the people who teach us and reveal God's truths to us. Jesus also calls us to choose the narrow way, and there's a judgment here. Now, I'm at the end of my sermon. Did you look through chapter 7? and find the number of animals Jesus spoke about? Did you get six? Well, I got pigs, dogs, serpents, wolves, sheep, and fish. Did you miss out any of those? Go back, read the whole chapter again. I believe Gary is doing another sermon on this whole chapter next week. So you'll be ready for next week if you read it through a few times. Now let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have infinite wisdom. Your ways are higher than our ways. Lord, I'm so aware of missing the mark when it comes to treating others like you would have them treated, and I ask forgiveness for this. I don't always see with your eyes the people around me. I ask, Lord, that you would give me your divine discernment and wisdom to know where I have blind spots and take that log out of my own eye. Lord Jesus, I ask that the people listening today would hear this message that you are calling them to judge wisely with humility, the right way of living on earth, your way, your narrow way. I pray that your presence and your peace goes with each one as they walk this week with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thanks for joining us again today. Let's remember that as we go this week, even though many of us are still limited to staying at home, you know, we can still phone someone, we can still email, we can still, you know, as we go about and exercise and walk and do our shopping, wherever we go, you know, we can make a difference. We can bring encouragement. We can be our, a light to our community. You know, wherever we go, we are God's ambassadors. And we can make a difference as we allow the light of the Holy Spirit to shine uh, from within us. This morning, I just want to finish our time with a, a blessing from the book of Jude. We'll finish with this. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory and majesty power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore Amen God bless you all have an awesome week